In my book, Telling Lies, I list over 30 different signs of lying, some in the body, some in the voice, some in the speech, many in the face. The face is the single best source, but if you only use the face, your accuracy rate is 70%. Well, that'll get you published, but it's of no practical use. Yeah, and in that book, you talk about how you've heard the CIA and, and those kinds of institutions are using your work, but you don't know if they're using it properly because they've never really consulted you. Is that well, true? they have consulted me, but okay. they haven't told me what they're doing. I see. And I never got involved. I'm very firmly opposed to anything that even borders on torture. I advocate humane interviewing, which I believe can be quite successful because everyone has a story to tell. If you can convince them that you're not biased, that you really want to understand their viewpoint and why they did whatever it is they did, it's just amazing. Most people, over 90% will tell you the truth. If you validate their emotions. Yes, and you, but you have to be willing to spend time. You're not going to figure it out in five minutes or a half hour. It may take you a few hours. Mm. Mm -hmm. But the high stake cases, some of which I've been involved in, some criminal cases and some uh, financial cases, uh, that it's worth it uh, to spend the time. And it certainly, uh, I completely am opposed to and uh, any use of high pressure, anything that borders on, let alone is torture. And it, our government engaged in torture. Um, under the Bush administration. Now, I can understand that they felt desperate, but even when you feel desperate, there are lines you shouldn't cross, and torture is one of them. And not only because it's wrong morally, that should, that's sufficient, but it also can give you a lot of false information. Yeah, it doesn't work a lot of times. That's right, and you never yeah. know which is which. Yep. So uh, yep. the right. better... Put in the time, do the humane interviewing, uh, and you'll get very good uh, results. Uh, now, we live in an impatient culture where people want answers fast. And so that's one of the things that led to the use of torture. I'm ashamed to say that it was figures high up in the American Psychological Association who designed this torture program and got paid for it. Uh, in today's email, I got an apology, as did every other member of the American Psychological Association, for the association having been so complicit in torture. And it was. Now, they say they have now set up safeguards so that won't happen again. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. And what American people don't know but should feel proud of is that the people who first blew the whistle on the use of torture in Afghanistan and Iraq were Navy officers, Navy lawyers who saw what was going on and said, we won't participate. This is wrong. Mm. So we should be proud of them. I, I, I think so, too. And, and I remember when we were doing what was called extraordinary rendition, oh, yeah, taking people and, and putting them, flying them really to countries that didn't have the kinds of laws we do against torture and turning them over to the, uh, to the local authorities accidentally on purpose or whatever. So there was a lot of behavior that in hindsight, well, even then was pretty shameful. Um, and, uh, and so I, th I, I and hear I think, what you're saying. And I think in terms of your work as well, showing the universality of emotions, it's not <clears> – <throat> once you recognize that, you can predict emotionally how – your opponents will react. You knew how that was going to be perceived by the Iraqi people and the damage that would do to the U.S. effort there. Well, even whether it will do it, damage or not, it's wrong. Right. That's and a, we a have point. to be a democracy. I think all democracies have to have moral principles at their core. Mm -hmm. I agree. That, I couldn't if agree they more. don't, yeah. then you know, they're really not worth uh, sustaining. Well, they can't be there just when it's convenient. I was always told as a kid, you, you, it's hard to, be, to behave like a gentleman when you don't feel like a gentleman. You know? good, good statement. Yeah. 